Amo el dinero. As one of my subscribers said, <laughs> as one of my subscribers said, these prices are muy linda, mi gente, muy linda. These have been some great prices, man. They're going down. This is the perfect time to scoop up and increase on generational wealth. This is where the wealth happens, when those prices are plummeting and hopefully they go lower. Let them go lower. This is when you scoop up your biggest bags. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is when I scoop up the most and increase on my billions bag. This is where the winning is done. Get down and dirty. That's right. We're sharks in the water. And the blood is in the water and it's time for a feeding frenzy. Now, everyone is different. I can't tell you what to do. I'm only telling you what I do. What you do is up to you, right? Now, we did have the Federal Reserve release their document. And as I thought, it's really just a play off of the Made in Labs document, in my humble opinion. They, the government is given information. They're not innovators or they, they don't have that higher level understanding of technology. So everything is really given to them. They're like students in a classroom, but they're quite petulant. So they're going to throw a fit. They want to retain their power, even though technically they're sort of, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, inferior when it comes to understanding of what regulations should be issued on uh, new arising technologies that supersede the old legacy system regulations that do not apply to new um, to new technologies that burst from the old archetypes. You cannot put something that is old as far as regulation on a new archetype that has never been seen before. You just can't do that. So. <clears throat> We have this. Uh, we have a line of tweets from Danell Dixon. Was highly disappointed with the the outcome of that particular paper, as was I and many other uh, many other uh, brilliant minds within the community. However, I'm going to differ with um, the great leader of Stellar Foundation, Danell Dixon, who wins all the time. And this is the attitude of a winner that you're seeing in these tweets, by the way. But I'm going to differ in this one way. I don't see this as a negative. I see this as a positive because it's going to buy us more time to increase the efficiency, increase on how uh, advanced Stellar, the Stellar uh, blockchain is, XLM is, what it can do, how many transactions per second. This is your opportunity to just take off, to go so far in advancement of what the federal government or any governments can do that you are absolutely undeniable. So you take all of that fire that's in your belly, you take all of that, all of that uh, disappointment and you you use it to your advantage you use that energy use that energy to your advantage fire your people up hire some more engineers some more designers people of that nature and you continue to uh, advance your product you still do the same meetings you still do the same meetings you still try to close the deals you still uh, uh, answer the phone when the Fed calls I believe, I believe that there is such a, a, a dire position that all they can do is punt regulatory clarity down the field. All they can do is punt putting the CBDC off down the hill because they want someone to hand it to them. Guarantee you, you come to them with a, a good enough product and they're hurting bad enough and they're hurting pretty bad right now, but they have a little bit of life left in their system, okay? They have a little bit left and we all know that, but let them hurt a little bit more. Let them bleed out a little bit more. You have to let them suffer. I know you want that money. I want that money too. I know you want legendary status. I want legendary status as well. And we shall have it. We shall have it. But you have to let them bleed out a little bit more. You have to let them suffer. And they're going to they're going to clamor for what you offer when the time is right. And the time is almost right. Remember, the Fed and the actual uh, 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 and certain governmental entities are not on the same page. They're not on the same page. We get regulatory clarity. Maybe we, we, we achieve that first, then maybe we start issuing some digital currencies for states, for states, digital currency, start running some digital currencies and digital currency systems for commercial banks. Slowly you take over the system, little by little, little by little. We don't lose focus just because the, the big one, this is, and this was the biggest, but just because the big one might have been pushed a little bit back doesn't mean we're not gonna get it later. We can get it later and we will get it later, but we don't 
put our focus on that. We take everything and we use it to our advantage. That's what winners do and that's what we are going to continue to do. So this just delays it a little bit, but let's look at this tweet here from Danelle Dixon. The first tweet says this, the long awaited Federal Reserve CBDC discussion paper is out. First reaction, I had hoped this would be more of a jump forward for CBDC development in the US, but it still has a circling back at square one. I definitely agree with that second tweet here. With any big decisions punted for the time being, just for the time being, we continue to dominate, continue to innovate. That Starlight Protocol, I know that's not all you have in the bag. Pull some more things out the bag, really show them what you're made of. Um, shear up your technology even more, make it that much better. There's so much more that could be done. You know it and I know it. Let's do that because we're gonna take those trillions. We're gonna take those quadrillions and there's absolutely nothing that can stop us. You and I both know this. You and I both know it's nothing that can stop. there's nothing that can stop us. So we use this to our advantage. We've been given a little bit more time to improve. Do not rest on your laurels. Do not let the disappointment get to you. I know that you're not going to do that. I know you're not going to do that, but I'm just saying that because there's many people out there that need to hear this as well. All right, so now let's go on to this third tweet here. Second reaction, the considerations they present both for the benefits and the risks of CBDCs are thoughtful, relevant, and even better. They want to address these further by working with the industry scene, and that, that was another little bone they threw out there, but they've said that before. So continue to work with them, continue to educate them, bring them over to our side. We have been given more time. They didn't have to do that. They have antiquated systems that have been layered with uh, terrible, terrible new systems they've been cooking up in their laboratories and in their industries. And they could have rolled something out on those haphazardly and it would have been terrible, but they would have, we've seen the governments before do this and they ride on a dying horse. They could have done that. They did not do that. So like I said, the door is still open. I mean, the future is still brilliant and bright. We use this to our advantage. You stay in their ears, continue to do meetings. We are going to take this victory. And I think it's going to be quite easy. Let's continue on here. Fourth, uh, fourth tweet here. As we join the discussion, I'm hopeful that we can push for quicker next steps and help educate regulators. See, I told you. So Danell Dixon and I are on the same page. Continue to educate them. We have to stay in their ears. Their, their attention spans are very, very short. Very, very, very short. Keep them updated on the technologies. Continue to draw comparisons between what we are offering as the Stellar Foundation and holders of Stellar, okay? Uh, but what we're offering and the advanced technology that we are bringing to the table that can help and save everyone versus the old antiquated legacy system that's offering you more of the same and is going to injure and destroy everyone. We have to continue to iterate this to them, okay? It's, it's very substantial. now. But we're already on the same page. You just said the same thing. It says, and help educate regulators and Congress on the benefits of CBDCs and how we can implement them in a responsible way that helps citizens and reduces inequality. Ram that home as much as you can. Okay, because it, it draws, it pulls on the heartstrings. When you can pull on someone's heartstrings, it's easier to move them in a certain direction. We definitely need that. And right now, more than ever in, in the United States, people want uh, equality when it comes to money. Um, but this is for the people out there. A lot of them have no interaction with the federal government or know how they operate. Um, so, the, I, I mean, I think all of this is useful information to understand why it takes so long to get things done when it comes to the Fed. The Fed moves very, very slow and they want things handed to them. If you come to them with, uh, you come to a meeting with them, you better have everything to just hand them all the information, tell them what you need to know in a quick and succinct way. And um, you, you pretty much have to do everything for them. This is my humble opinion from my experience. Um, let's continue on here. Number five tweet, it says, like addressing the high cost of cross-border remittances from the US to help individuals and small businesses alike. This is another key issue that we must continue to bring forth to not only the, the Fed, but any government official. Because we have such a high migratory population in the United States, um, this is going to negatively affect them to a high degree. And, and they should not want that, we should not want that. But for us in particular, it is a linchpin of, of being able to move them into the, the, the direction of adopting this new financial system that's not only beneficial to everybody, but in my case and a lot of holders of XLM's case, is gonna bring us generational wealth. That's also beneficial because a lot of the individuals who are um, sending cross-border remittances are also in crypto. 
A lot of the younger generations and the middle middle generations, uh, whether they're from the United States or not, or not, are into crypto. And it's going to be a benefit to them to have the new system implemented where they can benefit from the rise in appreciation of these particular assets, not just cross-border remittances uh, um, outright, but all of the different uh, accoutrement, so to speak, that comes along with cross-border remittances and the utilization of cryptocurrency technologies. It's been highly, highly, highly beneficial, has it not? All right, so now we continue on here. And then of course here, the sixth tweet ends with good thing as Stellar Org has already done a lot of the legwork. I see why am I this week, we released a CBDC guidebook for policymakers and regulators. Didn't I tell you guys this before? This was made for them? I knew it. I knew this was made for them. There was a precursor that was sent out before, I'm pretty sure. They have a myriad of, of CBDC uh, guidebooks and documents and stuff. This is the most improved that they've had, the most uh, condensed that they've ever put out. And I knew it was for this particular reason because they had meetings behind closed doors, obviously. Obviously, and they were going a certain way and they wanted to sort of lean the Fed in a certain direction. But the Fed being as frustrating as power, powerful as it is, doesn't really have to lean. It can lean in front of you and they can make it seem like they're going to go with your ideas. And then at the last second, just say, eh, no, we're just going to stay neutral for now and see what happens. And, th and this is something that happens quite often. So <laughs> is this just me or is, is it the way that I'm reading these tweets? It seemed like crypto was fighting back today, hardcore. <laughs> they were really, really fighting back. Um, so you have this string of tweets from Ripple here. So it's on January 20th. It begins as such. Today, Congress is holding a hearing about sustainability of crypto. Let's review the facts. As one of more than 200 members of the Crypto Climate Accord, we're excited to work together with the crypto industry to develop solutions that enhance sustainability scalability and create value for all some don't know this but there are cryptocurrencies that use very little en energy now when it, when they say some don't know this they're talking about people in the government the people in the government that are allowing um cbdc's to get punted down down the street and put off for long periods of time people in the government that are allowing the sec to drag uh, uh green beneficial cryptocurrencies like xrp and beneficial companies like Ripple doing a fantastic job, by the way, drag them through the mud and hold them back and hurt all of the investors and holders of their particular cryptocurrency and coins. They are speaking to these types of individuals, not you and I. We're, we're very educated. We know what's going on. We're, we're very much in the know. OK, we have a lot of wisdom to, and wisdom to spare. They're speaking to the government, as I said before, and you can tell from the tweets from Danell Dixon as well as Ripple that as I iterated before, I reiterate, many people in the government are uninformed about cryptocurrencies. They are not well-educated whatsoever. I think a lot of them are not well-educated in general, um, which is a terrible, terrible thing. I, I say that in all humility is a terrible, terrible thing because then it hinders some of the understanding that one can have of, of things that are beneficial. So when things are different to an individual who is not well educated, they tend to be very fearful and pull back from those particular things that they're not familiar with. They're afraid of it just based upon its un, their, their uh, uh, lack of familiarity with it. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but this is who they're writing to, that type of individual. And then, then they continue on here. It says, for example, proof of stake or federated consensus based cryptocurrencies like XRP do not rely on mining it says in quotes mining and use very little energy and this is something that i i really really dislike uh when it comes to how they paint cryptocurrencies as all being like bitcoin or ethereum and having them as the poster children for cryptocurrencies when really they're the legacy cryptocurrencies legacy they're the old technologies and you have all of these banking coins like xrp xlm algorand hbar cello that are completely uh, superior, do not use mining. They do not use mining. They are carbon neutral, or some of them are even carbon negative, negative. And they, the, the, the government does not understand that. They don't understand it. A lot of the masses of the people don't understand that. This is why I'm waiting to see what 
This is why I'm interested in waiting to see what uh, HBAR is going to do with advertising. That is something that Hedera needs to run home into everyone's mind. Um, really, really drive that point uh, into people's minds that there are cryptocurrencies like Hedera HBAR that are carbon negative, carbon negative or carbon neutral. Algorand needs to push that. Algorand has been doing a great job actually uh, pushing that that message out there to the people. They've been doing a great job. So let me not say Algorand, Stellar needs to do that. Ripple needs to continue. They've been doing a great job with it as well, but more advertisements. As soon as you can start funneling advertisement money into television, into YouTube, uh, into any of these popular social media sites or television uh, premium services where you do these, uh, I, don't, I don't know how that works, but some way you need to work with big companies that can get your message out there that, hey, we are not Bitcoin is what I'm saying. And we, you need to let the public know this and educate them and continuously have this message put out there because it takes a long time for them to absorb the truth. It takes them a long time to absorb new information and separate the, the majors from what will be the uh, superiors in the future. So separating Bitcoin and Ethereum from the superiors in the major coins that are, are burgeoning and are coming in the future, which will dominate XLM, XRP, Algorand, HBAR, and Cello will dominate in the future, dominate. Uh, and their prices will be unbelievable to most, okay? Uh, in comparison to what they are now. They go, it's gonna be unbelievable. So that's who they're talking to there. Let's go into this next tweet from Ripple. It says, in fact, the XRP ledger is the first major global blockchain to be carbon neutral. I told you, carbon neutral since 2020. Hashtag blockchain is destined to be an important and potentially catalytic component of addressing climate change as the global economy transitions to low carbon slash carbon neutral in an effort to meet the Paris Climate Accords goals. I said this before and now you're hearing Ripple say it. Uh, if if uh, energy inefficient cryptocurrency like Bitcoin can't change, Ethereum can't change. And I believe that people are trying to change them. I heard some things. Um, that they may be doing some some new work to Bitcoin to make it more energy efficient. I don't know. We'll wait. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and if they do, that's very good for holders of Bitcoin. And hopefully, they can continue to make some money. I hope that everybody continues to make a lot of money. All right. Um, but the Bank of International Settlements, European Central Bank, the World Bank, uh, as well as the International Monetary Fund, are pushing the green agenda they only want green cryptocurrency green blockchains anything that they use that's technological that's technological they want it to be carbon neutral or carbon negative and that is it and they have enough money and enough power to enforce it right now they're being very nice about it these are the first steps these are the precursors to enforcement okay first they tell you what they want and they float the ideas then they become a little bit more aggressive with ideas. Then they enforce it later and they have enough money to do it. So it's in holders of Bitcoin, for as an example, in Ethereum's best interest to become more energy efficient and do it immediately where it's not going to be, uh, well, where holding those assets is not going to be damaging to the, uh, to the investor. We'll, we'll wait and we'll see what happens and hopefully they can do that. Um, their success, I, I want to I want to say this also, their success or continued function uh, does not negate from what the banking coins are going to do. There is nothing that can stop the banking coins. Seventy five trillion dollar market, <laughs> six hundred and eighty nine billion dollar market separate from the seventy five trillion dollar market. And then on top of that, quadrillions of dollars, especially when we're taking into account all the world's wealth all the world's assets and intra-bank payments. Let's take that into account as far as average uh, transaction values uh, north of $400,000 each. There is no comparison. They're not a threat to the banking coins whatsoever. <laughs> whatsoever. It's not even close. So they can continue to do what they're doing, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and continue to make their people money. We're going to make money and there is nothing that could stop it. Not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. There is nothing that could stop us. That's just the truth. That's just the way that it is. Um, so let's continue on here with these Ripple tweets. They sent out a lot of tweets just like Danelle Dixon did. Crypto was fighting back today. I'm very, very proud of the Stellar Foundation and of Ripple. Um, 
Let's continue on here. It says, and blockchain has the power to help enable carbon markets to modernize and scale by addressing some of the major pain points in the current system, such as through tokenized carbon credits that can be verified and easily transferred. That's very interesting that, that Ripple says that. I don't know that Ripple is involved with a company possibly or has a mechanism where they're doing um, tracing, like they're, tr they're tracing um, different products, tracing different things, tracing different pieces of information, sort of like what VeChain does or what ScanTrust does. I think ScanTrust though has a deal with uh, or a partnership with Cardano. So, but their, their traceability protocol where, where they track something. So they track how many bottles of wine are going out of a warehouse. Where did they come from? When were they made? They track, track all of that information. Um, it would be interesting if Ripple did do something like that. I don't think it's necessary for XRP or the XRPL to be quite honest. I don't think it really adds too much to it, but yeah, sure. If they want to dominate another market, they definitely could do that. But as of right now, I don't know that they have that going on. So for them to say, uh, as through tokenized carbon credits that can be verified and easily transferred verification. Yeah, I guess it's not so much traceability, right? It's just verifying something um, and easily transferring it. Okay, so maybe I was reading a little bit too deep into that and they're not talking about like just completely tracking everything. But if you're talking about carbon credits, you definitely gonna have to do some sort of tracking with that, I would think. Ripple is committed to a clean, prosperous, and secure low carbon future, achievable through innovation, new technology, and market-based solutions. So there is a lot going on in crypto. Crypto is continuing to fight the battle, the war against the legacy system. Believe me, the governments, federal or otherwise, state, a lot of them are just fronts for the legacy system. The legacy system has a lot of money out there. A lot of power, I told you this. They've been working with these individuals for a long time. A lot of individuals from certain positions, I'm just gonna phrase it that way, retire from those positions and then get, then get higher paid positions in the legacy system. So there's all of this interconnectedness, all right? So yes, they're going to drag their feet. They're gonna give you a hard time. They're gonna haze you. They're going to push you back. They're going to try to allow their friends, and that's exactly what it is, more time to accumulate money, to make money, to bring in capital, to try to cook up a technology that where maybe they don't have to be pushed out as much. It's not just about coexistence, right? It's settling for coexistence. It's about how much of that coexistence you're going to dominate. Are you going to, are you going to take up 75% of the system while we coexist? And, 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 and you take 25, I take 75, who's going to get the 75? So it's all this juxtaposition now. So it opens up that realm for the legacy system to fight for a more significant piece of the markets than what they really should be allotted because they're doing a terrible, terrible job. And, uh, and if you ask me, and I said this before, if the legacy system continues to punt everything down the road, put it off, the, the, um, if the Congress members choose to issue regulatory clarity, they could involve themselves with regulatory clarity and bring it about by, by some means. Stellar Foundation and Ripple, I, 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 I'm telling you, start dominating. Just start dominating, start taking over. I know you want to integrate. I know you want interoperability with the legacy system and you don't want them to think you're taking over. If you wait on them too long, they will take everything from you, push you out, and you will never have the chance. I know that's not going to happen, but I'm, I'm telling you now, in my humble opinion, dominate. Start doing uh, uh, um, infrastructure for states. So now you can't be removed. There is no avoiding you. Start doing infrastructure for states. Start doing digital currencies for commercial banks if you have to. You have all the different central banks around the world. They're going to support you. Do not wait on it. If you get regulatory clarity, do not wait on that federal CBDC to come. Start working on other things. So now you have one politician that was trying to write a bill to keep the Fed from issuing a central bank dig digital currency. Well, okay, so does this individual have an alternative plan? Are they, are they willing to allow states to have their own state-based digital currencies? Something like that. We need to start looking forward and planning uh, on on different methods of domination, which you might have already done. You might have already done that and I might be preaching to the choir, but I just wanna put that out there just in case, just in case it hasn't been thought of yet, okay? So now it's out there. Uh, so start planning to dominate 
without a federal federal CBDC just in case. And for those prices to go insanely parabolic, truth be told, you don't need a federal CBDC. If you're dominating all the states with their infrastructure and digital currencies and state-based digital, digital currencies or a national digital currency based uh, based on another governmental entity might issue might might allow you to put certain things together you may be able to formulate it in a different way by the way thus skirting around the issue of a um a central bank digital currency uh, to the nature of what the fed was going to do you can do it in a different way <laughs> you can do it in a different way so um there's a lot of different ways especially with the advent of stable coins Okay, and if stable coins are, e are, are uh, able to get achieve regulatory clarity, then that opens up the possibility for the banking coins to just flood in and just dominate. So we'll see what happens. Uh, everything's going good right now. It's a very interesting time. Those prices are low. Great time for accumulation. Amoel del Nero. Amor de love the money this is a time where you really really make your money and when those prices go up you're going to see some exponential gains not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor so <laughs> now that you have that information what are you going to do with it i know what i'm going to do with it so until next time let's get to the money